Jimbooey, Jimbooey, he was a bold adventuring man. Jimbooey, Jimbooey, battled for right with a powerful hand. His blade was tempered and so was he. Indestructible steel was he. Jimbooey, Jimbooey, he was a fighter, a fearless and mighty adventuring man. In 1829, Louisiana had been an American state for almost 20 years, but still present were many evidences of the Spanish and French rule of the previous century. This is the story of one American and two of those heritages, Spanish cattle, Cajun women, and Jim Bowie. Jim Bowie. Oh, yeah. You ought to know better than to uh, try and rope them Spanish cattle. Why, that's man's work. Yeah, look at this pommel. Broke right off. Seems it's been cut. Yeah, yeah. What you need is, is one of these big old Spanish saddles like this in here. Big old horn reinforced with iron. There ain't no steer critter alive gonna pull off this horn. Don't care how shag nasty he be. Well, that's a fine saddle, all right. Where'd you get it? I uh, wanted playing coon can last year over at Nakatosh, off a of cowboy. Yeah. yeah, it's a real antique. Awful hard to come by. You like to buy it? Huh? How much? Well, uh, I'll tell you what. Being you're an old friend and neighbor, you know, I'll trade you your outfit for mine, horses to boot. <laughs> well. You've been running him hard, haven't you? Oh, I'll admit it. I'll admit he's not too long on wind. But seeing as you're getting the best of the saddle, I should get in the best of the horse. And a kind of cow hawk, isn't he? I'll admit it. I'll admit he's not much on a race course. But if you're fixing to run steers, he's better than the one you got. Yeah, just sort of goes under this saddle. Knows how to pull up real sharp when he feels a steer tugging at the other end of the rope. <laughs> Ray, you, uh, you running away from something? You in trouble? Me? In trouble? <laughs> now, Jim, you ever heard of me in trouble? I never heard of you out of it. <laughs> oh, I'll admit to, to fighting and brawling, but that's little trouble. You ever heard of me in big trouble? Then why are you so greedy for a fast horse? Well, it's a speculation up in Natchez way. Oh. If I can get there fast enough, I stand to make a fortune. Now speak up, Jim. Are we swapping or am I riding on? Well, uh, I'll tell you something, Ray. Last time I was in Natchez, I almost made a fortune myself. A fella tried to sell me something, a real bargain, for a thousand dollars. Well, uh, what was it? A gold brick. Now, you get that cowhawk, jug-headed hay burner out of here. I, I should have known you'd be too smart at horse trading for me, Jim. Well, I guess this is the end of steer running for me today. Uh, now, wait a minute, Jim. Uh, seeing you're set on steers, why don't you take my saddle? No swapping, just a loan. No, no, thank you, Rafe. I'm not that set on it. Why not? I I'm only riding home. I thought you said you was going to Natchez. No, no, that's just horse trading talk. Oh, oh. I'll tell you what. Take my horse with it. Save us both unsaddling, and you can bring it back in a day or so, and I'll just ride home on yours. Well, I would like to get that steer. Sure you would. Now, you just get on this horse here and try a good saddle, huh? Yeah. Yeah, stirrups about right. Yeah, stirrups is fine. Fine. Hey, Ray, you're being mighty obliging. Well, I hadn't ought to try to outslick you. Wasn't very neighborly. I'll admit it. You know, I'd just as lief poke you in the nose. I feel I'd cuss it with myself. <laughs> Anytime you feel like poking me in the nose, Brother Ray, you're welcome to try it. Well, now, the next three minute I have, I'll just drop by your place and take a lick at it. It uh, should not have taken much longer than a minute. <laughs> hey, you got a pretty high opinion of your fighting ability, haven't you, Brother Ray? I'll admit it. <laughs> Out for you, officer. What is this, a robbery? A thousand pounds, monsieur, but they are pursuing someone, and you have much the appearance of the man we seek. Except the, the horse and the saddle are not the same. Well, I'm glad to hear it's not me, gentlemen. Who is this fellow you're after? A man by the name of Bradford, Monsieur Rafe Bradford. 
Rafe Bradford. Seems I've heard that name somewhere. My name happens to be Jim Bowie. <laughs> I'm Francois Leprix. This is Jean Roussel, my cousin. Say, what does this critter Bradford look like? I passed a couple of fellas on the trace. Well, he has much the same appearance and coloring as yourself, monsieur. We have never seen him, of course, but one thing we are sure of. He is riding a white horse with a, a Spanish saddle and a red Indian blanket. Spanish saddle? You mean a rig with a high pommel and antique leather? Monsieur, you have seen this saddle? Have I seen him? I talked to a man on such a saddle not two minutes ago, about a quarter mile back on the trace. Merci, monsieur. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Halt, monsieur. One move, you are a dead man. Huh? Well, if you're looking to rob me, you're out of luck. Everything I own is in plain sight. We do not want your money, monsieur. We want you. Me? Did you not just admit to owning that saddle, monsieur? Oh, no. No, don't tell me Rafe Bradford just swapped me a stolen saddle. Is the saddle yours? Uh, none of your American tricks, monsieur. You're pleased to come with us. I don't like going any place unless I know why. The least you can do is explain. Monsieur, you have done a shameful thing to an innocent girl, the daughter of my sister. You have kissed her, and you have run away. I have kissed her, and I have run away. <laughs> According to the customs of my people, monsieur, a kiss is a promise to marry. So that's why, Ray, <laughs> you think that I'm... No, look, mister, you've got the wrong man. You're looking for Rafe Bradford. I just swapped horses with him not a few minutes ago. I'm Jim Boyd. I'm sorry, Mr. Bartsub. He said he was Jim Bowie. No, no, I'm Jim Bowie. He's Ray Bradford. <laughs> now, you will come with us, please. W where are you taking me? To our village, monsieur. And remember, we have the guns on you. Now go. Thus was Jim Bowie escorted to an unwanted wedding with an unknown bride, pondering the while on the perversity of fate and the perfidy of friendship. In the clannish Cajun fishing village of Bayou Baptiste, Jim was a foreigner, therefore a curiosity. The ladies were fascinated, the men reserved, the bride nowhere to be seen. Alex! Alex, you have to free! Howdy, man. Ce n'est pas la même personne, maman. Que tu dis? Non, non, non. Imbécile, qu'est-ce que tu as fait? Oh, you fool, this is not the man. Come on, what do you say? Mais non, ce n'est pas la même personne. This is not the man who is betrothed to my daughter. But this is how you described him, tall and dark. And what is most unmistakable, he was riding a white horse with a Spanish saddle and a red Indian blanket. True, so the saddle is the same, but the man, no, he's not. Oh, gentlemen, I'm sorry to tell you that uh, that's what I told you. <laughs> oh, monsieur, a thousand pardons. Jean, the knife. Oh, thank you. This is what comes from trying to please a woman. I bet. Uh, did you tell me that I was mistaken for this young lady's intended husband? Uh, oui, monsieur. And this is what uh, Rafe Bradford was running away from? Uh-huh. Well, he's plumb crazy. You are a friend of the scoundrel, monsieur? Oh, well, I have a nodding acquaintance with him, ma'am. Just nodding. Uh, how come you mistook me for Rafe Bradford? Hadn't you ever seen him before? Mais non, monsieur. The men of the village, we were out getting shrimp while he was here. <laughs> it's too bad, monsieur. But in Bayou Baptiste, there are not enough young, unmarried men to go around. Oh. <laughs> so Monsieur Bradford, although an American, was found to be acceptable. The marriage of my niece was permitted with the greatest reluctance, Monsieur. You must understand how she feels. The disgrace. Yeah, she's so pretty, too. Only a real monster of a man would run out in a beauty like that. Madame Rojan is a poor widow, Monsieur, with no one to protect her good name except me, her brother. Uh, monsieur, you are free to go any time. But we would be most happy if you would honor us with your presence at the wedding festival tonight. There was to be two weddings, of course, but now there will be only one. You will stay, monsieur? Well, it will be my honor, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mademoiselle Rougeon, my heartfelt sympathies. Merci, monsieur. Uh, and I can only say that Bradford's bigger fool than I thought he was. Monsieur, you would like a drink, no? Yes, sir. Annette, do you see him? Quel ballon. He is even more desirable than the other. 
Mama! Oh, you had your chance and you lost it. Look, look, the whole village is laughing at us. Hurry! Hurry, hurry! What is the matter with this man? He is a stranger. Besides, he, he is an American. The other was an American also. And has proven even stranger than this one. But I, I do not love this one. Love! <laughs> love! Ah, l'amour, ma fille, is a luxury which women cannot always afford. The men are scarce in these villages. This one has been sent to us from heaven, I tell you. Ah, oh, c'est a bon chance. She thinks you are pretty, no? Oui, maman. And she is pretty too. Oui, maman. Très bien, alors. Annette, did I not love your father? But certainly, maman. But not before the marriage. The marriage was arranged by our parents. The love, to my sir. Maman. Who will arrange this with him? Oh, mon Dieu. Are you not a woman? Have you not the eyes, the lips, the good sense to use them? Mama, I have always listened to you. But this thing, I, I will not do. Very well, then. Die, Spencer. Je m'en fiche. <laughs> ceremony will start soon. Isn't it a little unusual, wedding at night? We do not have enough priests for all the villages in the bayou. Those we have spend their time traveling from village to village, performing the marriages, the baptism, the first holy communion. Sometimes it is months between their visits. So for the young people in love, we have the broomstick wedding. It's like your civil ceremony. And when the priest comes, they are married again with the full rites of the church. I think you will find the ceremony as charming as it is practical. Shall we go? If you don't mind, then I'd like to bed my horse down first. Why don't you go ahead? I'll join you. Just as you say, sir. Now, Mamma, I will not do it. I will not set a trap for this nice man. Oh, come to God. May, may I speak with you a moment, please? Well, sure, miss. It, it is very embarrassing when a man runs away from a geisha and goes that, that he is kissed and, and promised to marry. Yeah, I guess it is. That rape. Oh, you, you will see him again, perhaps? I sure will. You will give him something for me? I'll make a point of it. We will go to the cabin of my mama, then we can talk. Oh, pleasure, miss. I ever sat on. It was a present for Mama. Oh. Monsieur, this is what I, I would like you to return to Monsieur Bradford for me. Did he give it to you? Oui. Mama does not know. Is it not beautiful? Why don't you keep it? But is it not the custom to return such gifts? He won't expect it back. But he ran away from me. He'll come back. He'd be a fool not to. He's probably just not ready to settle down yet. Oh, truly, Monsieur. Truly. Here, let me put it on for you. Um, uh, would you mind uh, lifting your hair at the back here? Hmm. All right? Yeah, thank you. Monsieur, do you think that I will die, spinster? I uh, very much doubt it, miss. You know, I do not think so, too. Here we All are. Right? Let's have a look. Very pretty. Uh, you know, where I come from, when a 
A fellow puts a necklace on a girl, and he generally gets a kiss for it. Americans have very nice customs. I think so. I think so, too. <laughs> well, now, look at this. Maman, it is not what you think it is. No, no. Oh, no, 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 Maman. Uh, Mr. Lepre, uh, look, let me explain. You see, I just put this necklace around there. I think uh, no, my but... friend, the man I broke bread with. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. There is only one honorable path for you to follow tonight, monsieur. Huh? The boomstick wedding for the both of you. Oh, no, no, no. no, no, no. no, 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 no. Weddings are always emotional, and this was no exception. As Jim Bowie heard the words of this quaint but nonetheless binding ritual, making crystal clear that couples who jumped the broomstick were married in the eyes of Cajun custom, he was filled with emotion. The emotion was pure panic. I am sorry, monsieur. Yeah, I'll bet. It, it was not my idea to trap you. It was the idea of my mama. In that case, why don't you tell him? It's too late now. I should help you escape. Could you bring Monsieur Bradford back to me? Yes, ma'am, with pleasure. Thomas, whatever he is, I love him, and he loves me. I'll bring him back if I have to hog time and drag him all the way. Then listen closely. Hmm? And now you, monsieur. Now, monsieur, you must jump the broomstick dreamly. You stumble with bad luck. Remember, monsieur, it is official and it is binding. And may happiness go with you, monsieur. <laughs> go. Don't move. Drop those guns. Go on. Get over there. First one of you moves, I'll shoot. about you, Brother Rafe. Weren't you in a powerful hurry to get someplace yesterday? I'll admit it. One of those things just didn't work out. Oh. Hey, you weren't uh, hurrying to any place. You were hurrying from someplace, that's all. Oh, did they catch up with you, Jimmy boy? Uh-huh. And did they take you back with them? Uh-huh. Well, come on, boy. What happened? You can tell old Brother Rafe. Same thing that would have happened to you. They almost got me married. You? You with that black-eyed Cajun? Yeah, Annette. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, what a gal, huh? Just think, you and Annette. Yeah, just think. <laughs> Ray. Yeah, yeah, Jim. Ray. She's a mighty fine girl, uh, Annette. Uh, don't you worry about her. She's too pretty a gal to stay single long. Oh, uh -huh. I think you're kind of wrong. Two ways wrong. First place. You shouldn't have kissed her and then lied to her. Second place, you shouldn't have lied to me. Oh, what's the matter, Jimmy boy? 
Can't you take a little old joke? Oh, sure. Oh. I can take a joke. But I don't generally laugh till the joke's finished. And this one isn't over yet. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> you know why? Why? Because I promised that little gal you going down there to marry her. I promised her you're going to jump the broomstick with her. <laughs> now you are being funny, Jim. You are the funniest ever. <laughs> My brother Jim. Now, you gonna come peacefully, or do I have to drag you? Oh, no, I ain't coming peacefully. And you ain't man enough to get me back any other way. Get on your feet, and we'll see whether I am or not. I believe he said it wouldn't take me longer than a minute. I'll give you one more chance to quit, Jimmy boy. That way you can save yourself a terrible licking. Try again, Brother Ray. No. Let me be the first to congratulate you, Brother Ray. Huh? Oh, oh. Next time we have a sociable little fight, I won't let you off so easy. <laughs> you won't, huh? Ah. You know, the only reason I lost this fight is because my heart wasn't in it. I got to thinking about that little Cajun gal, and I just couldn't bear the thought of losing her. I'll admit. Well, one thing's for sure, Brother Ray. Got a real nice place to set up housekeeping. Oh. <laughs> hey, Rafe, uh, uh, just a minute. I'll claim the best man's privilege. Oh? Brother Jim. Now, wait a minute, Brother Jim. Hmm? Let's get out of here before he claims more than he has a right to. <laughs> Thank you, Monsieur Jim, for everything. You're welcome, Annette. Oh, <laughs> Bye. Oh, Good luck. Good luck. Uh, Monsieur, it was noble of you to bring him back. Mm. Oh, not so noble. I just came back from a Spanish saddle. I uh, left in such a hurry, I forgot it. Oh, these Americans, I do not understand their customs. You get the Spanish saddle? He gets the beautiful daughter of my sister. <laughs> I think he got the better of the bargain, monsieur. I'll admit it. <laughs> Here's the star of our show, Scott Forbes. Hello, everyone. Hope you enjoyed tonight's show. And we'll be with us again next week for another exciting adventure in the life of Jim Boy. Jim Bowie, he roamed the wilderness on the
away from Manchester to Rio Grande. With all the might of his gleaming blade, he fought for the rights of man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, he was a bold, adventurous man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, battled for right with a powerful hand. His blade was tempered and so was he. Indestructible steel was he, Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie. He was a fighter, a fearless and mighty adventurous man.